Uh, can you hear the can you hear the piano? Yep. And we're live. Yes. <laughs> what? Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning if you are in Australia. Uh, my name is Paul Taub. I am a professor here at Cornish College of the Arts in Seattle, Washington. Uh, greetings from Seattle. I'm happy to welcome you to today's Intercontinental Masterclass with Israeli-Australian composer and concert pianist Yitzhak Yadid. Dr. Yadid has been acclaimed as one of the world's leading composers of the Third Stream, a mass route composer. He has multiple awards to his name, including major prizes for composers and performers in both Israel and Australia. See Yitzhak's website for additional information about this composer and pianist, yadidmusic.com. Yitzhak Yadid, when my ensemble, the Seattle Chamber Players, invited him to participate in our sixth International Icebreaker Festival in 2012, which focused on music by composers that surround the Mediterranean. Yadid was our Israeli representative, along with composers from Morocco, Spain, France, Lebanon, Croatia, and other countries in a lively weekend of music and other cultural exchanges that was held at Benaroya Hall in Seattle. We performed the composer's Passions and Prayers, Sextet in homage to Jerusalem, for horn, clarinet, trombone, viola, double bass, and piano. Today we are pleased and honored to have Yitzhak join us from the Queensland Conservatorium of Griffiths, Griffith University in Brisbane, Australia. I'm also pleased to introduce the three Cornish students who have been working on two movements from the composer's Arabic violin, bass, and piano trio. Why don't you guys come up to the stage? Um, Austin Larkin, our violinist, um, contrabassist Trevor O'Loughlin, and pianist Colin Wood. After, after several remarks from the composer, the trio will perform the fourth movement of the work, followed by the master class segment with the composer, followed by a question and answer session that can include questions from those present in the hall, as well as those following the class online. If you're watching it online at YouTube, Google Plus, or Twitter, please ask questions followed by hash, hash mark Cornish master class. So Yitzhak, it's nice to see you again, even though I'm looking in a direction I can't see you at all. But it's uh, welcome, and I'll go take a seat in the audience, and it's all yours. Thank you very much, Paul Taub. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the prayers for preparing the piece. Thank now, because I hear myself uh, in the delay, I'm going to take my hat on the way. And I'm going now to give a short introduction um, about my music and about Arabic violin based piano trio. Simply just to give you some um, ideas of um, why I'm proposing that way. And also to, um, when we hear the piece, we can talk about specific sex section. Um, so um, in the last, about 15 years I've been researching in, in, uh, in com composing and in performance music that integrates um, Arabic music, um, Arabic influence, Jewish music, and Western classical, uh, contemporary Western classical music. That means that I try to create something that use various musical materials that they, um, they can they from Arabic music, including uh, Akhmat, which is the uh, Arabic uh, music model system, including microtonality um, and heterophonic texture. Um, all this comes to me through my experience, musical experience, and I would like to just talk about it briefly. Um, I grew up in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a beautiful city, but it's also a city of uh, many conflicts. You may know conflict between uh, religions, conflict between people, political conflicts, many issues. So witnessing it um, was a major thing for me, and it can be seen in many of my works. So it's it's the musical things that I've experienced, but also the other um, images and, and 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 conflicts that I'll try to. 
uh, uh, playing in the music. <laughs> um, just to give you an example, um, heterophonic textures. Heterophonic texture is when a um, number of players play the same line, the same monophonic line, and each player gives its uh, um, own variation of the line. So all together, of kind of a, a melody or one of the plant creates some a unique texture. And that's in Jerusalem, it's very special when you um, when you go, for example, to experience a dive that, that, that's in synagogues, that you go to synagogue and you hear a group of people uh, chanting together and they sing in a, in a very specific way, which is not the Western, um, it's uh, in some cases, um, the, the music is not, um, I have to say, the punctuation of music is not very Western. The, the enter entry of the notes is not together. People change the pitch a little bit, and uh, because for them, what important is the content, not so much the music. But the texture is very beautiful. So um, one challenge for me was how to bring a texture that is makamat, the congregations, how to bring it into Western music. How would I do it? Would I ask the performance to play out of tune? Um, or how, how can I get it? Um, how can I imitate the semblance of these sounds? Um, so, uh, Arabic violin based piano trio is one piece that I composed as I call it group compositions. That is music that I um, for performers that I have some anticipation that they have experienced um, uh, with the improvisation and they have some ideas about Arabic music or Jewish music. And um, this is this is very important because I left a couple of sections very open for them to improvise versus other compositions, what I call group A compositions, I had to explain everything to great details. Um, so these group B compositions would be mostly chamber music versus for my other compositions. For group A composition would be um, more orchestral pieces or large and some of um, I was thinking to um, play something here for you uh, just to show you it, it's it's something that I do in this piece, so I think violin this piano trio, but I also do when I perform um, solo piano, and which is which is uh, playing makamat and using micro tonality on the piano, which obviously tune this piano tune with the uh, it's Western tuning, ten twelve tempered tuning. So how do I do it? I'm now going to play a short piece. Um, it's called the passing, which is. Uh, introduction to what we're going to hear so it's, it's and what i do is um i play inside the piano um with my hands the temper is expressed and when i want to play to, to change the the pitch i bend the strings a little bit down so i change the, the intonation so this is uh, an example of texting Thank you. 
Okay, so that was the... Thank you. Um, so, so the way the, 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 the use of the uh, use of Arabic um, normally with the set of chords, you have the full notes. In this case, we are using guitars. And then I was combining it with another note called last. Um, One more to another, so, um, but as I said, this is um, just bending the, the string to create this micro tonality. Back to um, Arabic violin based on the trick of um, the music um, um, has each, each movement has a number of sections and are called the musical images, and those musical images. Um, and um, they have names, just to present uh, something that inspired me, inspired my composition, also to give directions for the players and for the listeners. So the idea is that you, you read the titles and you kind of create your own understanding together with listening to the music. So I might just read it uh, for you before we hear the, the, the piece. Um, and those sections, um, I've been, I used different, various um, techniques in them. In some cases, compositional techniques. In some section, sections, it's more, um, it's, it's more uh, into Arabic music. For example, the beginning of the piece is, is a theme. And then it moves, in many cases, abruptly from one idea to another. And it's like, if you want, it's like watching a movie when you have something that happened in, in one mode and then abruptly change to something that happened in a different atmosphere, in the dark, and then it changed again. So it kind of takes you to different images and they all develop uh, throughout the piece. So really to understand the whole, I believe um, the whole piece should be but um, today I believe we're going to concentrate on the fourth and the third movement. So um, put my headphones back. Um, now I hear myself twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a good time to have uh, Paul if we can uh, hear the players. You ready to play the fourth movement? Yeah, yep. we're going to play the fourth movement first. Fantastic.
That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there are a couple of things that we can work to make them sound a bit better, but it's already sounds great to me. Um, at the beginning, it starts with uh, let's say cries of joy. That's the really that's the first image. Okay. Now, I felt as a bass. I think the bass should play everything. Everything in this section one register higher. We say again. Oh, so instead of playing. Instead of playing that, you want me to go one up? It should be one up. Oh, okay. Now, now uh, I know it's hard to get the, the, the pitch correctly, but this is part of the of the sound that I want to get. I want it to sound like no, no, it doesn't have to be exactly on pitch, especially with other instruments, as well as um, you can use um, lots of um, um, vibrato, molto vibrato. Um, my would you would you want it as a harmonic because my bass doesn't go that high? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Oh, that's an F. That's just an F. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's it. Hmm? But your F sharp, yeah. just just one down. Yes? Good. Molto vibrato. Yeah. C -c Can you sing it? How would you want it? How, how do you hear cries of joy? Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't really get the vibrato. Hmm? I think so, yeah. It should be like... There we go. Yeah, that's it. And uh, how can you make it a bit louder? Exactly, that's it. So um, let, let's see the beginning. Just the first four bars with the dance solo. That sounds great. Um, and then we have this uh, second section. I thought it could be a little bit faster. Faster, yeah. A little bit. Um, also, if you can, I can just. Uh, where the exits are. You can exaggerate that a bit. Okay. You want can to I hear it, please? Yeah. Yes.
Fantastic. Yeah, that sounds great. <clears throat> the next section was beautiful, the violence regard. I love this solo. Uh, have you followed any specific macans? Can you tell us about how you, what you choose to play here? Yeah, I started in Husseini and then um, went to, uh, I think, Sika and then Sabah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So obviously you have some understanding in, in Arabic music and I could hear it in your playing. Yeah. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, I think we should move on to uh, bar 10. Which measure is it? Bar 10. I felt that the staccato could be a little bit shorter, more like a staccatissimo, something like that. <laughs> I would do double accent even and the staccato a bit shorter. Uh, can you play that please? Yeah. Call and response here yeah. from bar 24. Um, now, the violin, this is an example where the violinist could uh, add some ornamentation here, <laughs> which you do. But um, I think in bar 28, for example, I would, I would use a little more. <laughs> This sign that you see there, it's a, a glissante, glissante together with vibrato. Okay. Can you, can you play 28, please? Yeah. Uh, Just solo, violin. Uh, By vibrato, it's you want me to like do a glissando between the okay. Like, let me ask you, uh, ignore, ignore the glissando, just do vibrato. Okay, uh, a, a little, a little greater. Vibrato. So, uh, uh, ta -la -la -la. uh just, just, just do a C now. Ta -la -la -la. Just that note for longer. The next one. Oh, big left. Yeah. Now this is a technique that uh, I've used to imitate the uh, how Makamandi played this. So the vibrato together with the sandal. So you're um, so you keep doing the vibrato, but 
release it at the same time. Okay. Like that? Mm. I can't hear the glissando very well. Can we do just glissando now? Start the glissando uh, a little bit quicker. So, instead of don't, don't stay on the note that long. So, start the glissando straight, straight ahead. Okay. You so you want the glissando to last longer or shorter? I want to get it longer. So you okay. start it. Oh, good. Again. Beautiful. Now, now with vibrato. Do you want the vibrato to be like in time with the rest of the ensemble like like yeah. you yeah. the vibrato should, 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 shouldn't be so much with the rest of the ensemble because that's how the heterophonic texture been created if you do the vibrato and the double bass uh, well, in this case, uh, a bass and piano aren't playing, but when you have a unison like this, so one player is doing a variation with using vibrato and the other not, so it doesn't have to be so much, but it needs to be some way synced with the other. Okay. So, so what I'm suggesting here is, is, uh, is uh, an effect that created with the vibrato, constant vibrato, and you reach the pitch, uh, you, the pitch is changing all the time, but with vibrato and with glissando. Okay, so you want, the, so you want like the, <laughs> that the fingers that I'm using to gliss to the next note to be vibrating? As well. Okay. Ah, isn't it? Okay, that makes more sense. So it would be like... That's kind of... Yeah. Okay. The vibrato a little bit, a little bit greater. And now... Oh! Nearly, nearly, nearly. Yeah, I would I would suggest just to practice just vibrato. Okay. And then just glissando and then try to do them at the same time. Okay. Okay. Um I felt that sometimes the liquid sounds a little bit rush. So just be aware of that. Uh, can I get you to play uh, from uh, Barton again? Yeah, totally. Thank you, Dolan Ensemble, please.
the yeah. habit of that ornamentation. I'm sorry. I, I got to break it. No, no, that's no problem. Um, it's um, it's something that needs needs practicing, I believe. But once you get it right, it uh, it sounds very very good, I believe. Uh, now, bar thirty four piano. Um, this is a, a a toccata technique. What what what, what fingering are you using? Um, two in both. I call it. Fantastic. Two in both hands. Yeah, now can I get you to not use the pedal at all? Sure. Yeah, so uh, to make it more even, yeah. Um, so finger number two, both hands should help. Um, to try tapping the piano first. So this should be constant, if you, if you can try the... try to play a little bit lighter so instead of uh Fantastic. Um, so Austin, you did use some uh, ornamentation here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On those parts, I, I'm going to. I'll start. I'll start adding some ornamentations on it. And that's fantastic. That's exactly uh, what I wanted, and that's why I called it Arabic uh, 
violin based piano yeah, trio, so it's not a rhombic violin instrument. Yeah, there are, there are, there's moments where it, it feels and sounds extremely natural to add ornamentations, but it wasn't really ever written that like I should do that. So I, then that was going to be something I was at, I was going to ask you is like when you're when you're composing. Well, I think you asked and you asked and you answered it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something you would do because it comes naturally from the music. So please yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, but you you originally wrote this with a violinist in mind to perform it. So. Um, why did you um, leave out like instructions to um, um, ornament the the melodies? You you didn't like write that out in the in the piece. Simply because, I, as I said, this is one piece that I wrote for as part of group B compositions of mine. This is music for performers uh, like you that have uh, experience in, in that style of music. So they would they would want to do it in their in their way. Yeah, yeah. So in some cases when I really wanted it or in a specific way, then I have notated it. But in, in many other cases I left it uh, unnotated, but it's something that, that required you, you would do it as, as you as you do. Yeah, but not even like a not even like a thoroughly notated ornamentation, but just like uh, a note saying, "Feel free to ornamentate the melodies as you would like to, or something." Just because I, I yeah, get like... it should be when you read the the notes that I wrote, it should be there. The notes that I wrote about the piece. Okay. Yeah, when I'm saying that I'm trying to, in some cases, so yeah, I could I could have added a note here in this, in this section that uh, that that's what I want. But uh, I see what you're saying. That's a good point. Um, but the, the fact that you do it, it also answers that, that it, it comes naturally with the music. Yeah, totally. Uh, because when you play Makama, that's the way you play Makama. Yeah. Right? If I ask you to play um, um, uh, uh, Saba, for example, you wouldn't just play the notes. You, you would make some sort of improvisation. Yeah. Same thing. Okay, let's continue. Uh, bar 51, please. Also here, I felt it could be a little bit faster. Okay. 51. Challenging yet. Yeah. This bar 59 uh, should be a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, I would I'd suggest to play it um, at least for the practice more staccato. <laughs> Staccato, but not fast enough. Okay. Do you want me to play staccato too? Because you have the first two bars slurred. 
I know, but for the practice. Okay, just yeah, okay. I think it should be something in between that, but not so much, uh, not that staccato, but not so much legato. It's more to show the slurs and more to show the, the phrases. Okay. So, you want to try one more time, staccato for now, and a bit faster. a lot better. I would, I would even keep it staccato. Um, but it's one, it's example where you can choose how to do it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but there's another spot that, um, let me see. Okay, bar 71, or from 71, uh, this is the telephonic texture, and he did it really well. I only wanted the bass to be where, where the double bass um, high notes, everything should be one register high. Um, okay. Now, you, you're going to tell me that you don't have these notes. <laughs> uh, that's more playing in a harmonic way. Okay, one more harmonic. Artificial though. Artificial. Artificial. In the same way as you played the uh, bar 67. Oh, okay. You want more like that? I can do that. C can I hear bar? Um, let me suggest where is that? So no false harmonics? Oh. Yes. Yes, false. Wait. Please, can I hear you playing from 71? Maybe the. Okay. So everything, oh, this, this section should be, uh, all of you, the ensemble. I would love to hear the ensemble. Okay. Uh, but uh, it should be, tempo should be a little bit slower. And let me also suggest that one of you. Perhaps uh, Austin would give a bit of, would, would cue it a little bit. Okay. Oh, just just stay on this E flat, A uh, flat. Oh, you want me to? It says improvise. Yeah, it's improvising around this note. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, want us to take it from seventy one again, the beginning of the section, or? Yes. Um. Yes, Austin. I also hear. I, li I like your uh, lamentation, but remember this uh, fact that. Uh, Vibrato and glissando also. Okay. Totally. Here. 
Thanks for the bass. Piano a bit softer, please. More bass. Most of it brought to this. Keep on, keep on. Yeah. Bass motor vibrato all the time. This song from Tichello. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, so I'm just going to read the, going to read the notes I wrote a prayer formed in a quasi unison to a group of people praying together. You can sometimes change the pitch and include the use of uh, microphones or salt on the cello and introduce uh, tremolo at the end of phrases. Uh, now, bar 88. Uh, the madness of creation, I felt could be a, a lot faster. Okay. Um, and also the solo, um, a lot more like busy there or okay. more chaotic. <laughs> so it's more like this the tempo. <laughs> and the glissando, I do with my arm like that. I'll show you. Uh, Thank you. 
Should we hear the third movement now? Yeah. After they decided to leave the, the pedal on, so it, it's okay if it blends. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. It's, it's a, for us, it's a space crunch. Um, the room needs to be used about 10 minutes after we're finished. The, um, and the, th the third movement takes about how long? Seven minutes. Oh, just seven minutes? No, it's like six, seven minutes. Oh, okay. Wait, I'd rather ask questions. Yeah, let's, let, let's, let's see. If, let, let's see. Let's see if there are questions, and otherwise we could maybe um, finish with the music. So apparently there are no questions from people uh, watching online, but I wonder if there are any from you guys in the audience here. How long has he been composing for? Um, I don't know if you could hear it, Yitzhak, but there's a question, how long have you been composing music? I started uh, composing um, at the age of 20 or 21, and uh, my musical education that was started as a pianist, I'm still a pianist, but then really composing when, when I was at the academy, um, and um, I was looking at, start writing music, and then I discovered Mahamat, and that's discovered that the music that I connected to. Um, yeah. <laughs> Write this piece. Like, how did you write this piece? Like, was it on a piano, on a computer, on the different instruments? Okay. Um, I don't use the computer that much to write uh, to compose. Uh, so I use the the piano, and I use just uh, paper and pencil and rubber. Um, for me, composing with a computer would be like painter using the computer to paint something. Um, um, I like I like the physicality of holding the pencil and writing and I like the struggle and also um, um, in a computer when you use software it's in a way it makes everything a little bit easier. You can be quite fast sometimes but it also limits your I believe limits the creativity of a composer because you work with um, something that is designed for a composer by some people, so it's 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 got many features, of course, but it, it's limited by that. Um, and if if, if it's limited because it, because it, it's been programmed, so that's already 
a limitation for me. So it's, I use the piano uh, to compose. I have a question. Um, in your program notes for this piece and some of the other things that I read in your writings, you obviously have an interest in, um, in how Arabic music has influenced contemporary Israeli music, uh, both popular music and I think also of, uh, concert music. And I, I found that to be so interesting, especially in, the, in these political uh, and social times. I wonder if you'd like to talk about that a little bit. Oh, that's, that's a big question. Yeah. Um, first, I feel that there is, um, between, between performers, players in Israel, that there is no conflict between, I mean, between Arabic uh, Palestinian players, and I, I, didn't, I, I never find conflict. So I've been performing with uh, uh, this piece you know, with uh, Israeli uh, Arabic violinists piano and uh, well there is an idea here for me um, that to shows that cultures that perhaps uh, have some conflict that they can work together and if they can work together in music they can work together otherwise um, and I'm not pioneering that there are other great composers in Israel that also deal with that um, sort of uh, genre of music and um, so it's been developed through the years in, in, in classical music and in, in popular music. Um, um, at the beginning, the founders of, of, of Israeli classical music have used that more in, in um, I believe, in more of a quotation. And um, it's been developed. And part of my research is how to uh, find a coherent way to kind of create an, uh, a, another language of that, that combines these musical elements. Well, yeah, it was, it's a kind of similar question. I was going to ask, as an Israeli composer using elements of Arabic music, how does the how how does the Arabic music community um, in Jerusalem, what? How do they feel about that? I guess um, it's an excellent question. Um, um, I I didn't talk much about my musical background, but for me, I um, my family, um, my family, you know, a couple of hundred years. Back, uh, they were living in, in, in Spain, and then they had immigrated or they deported from Spain, and they lived in Syria for about four, five hundred years before Israel. So Arabic music is part of me. Uh, as a child, I was um, I participated in singing Bakashot. Bakashot um, is a beautiful poem, um, and it's. That, that experience um, influenced me greatly, and the, the bakashot singing um, is, is makamat based. So, for me, Arabic music is, is that's the music I grew up with. Um, as I said, as a child, um, for, for so many years, I was part of singing makamat. So, so, um, and, and so the general community accepted. It's very natural that for me to, to compose that, to use this music material. I think Helen would appreciate that. Okay. Yitzhak, thank you so much. I wish we could uh, take you out for a beer or a coffee, but we'll just have to do it um, vir virtually. Um, but thank you so much, uh, everybody who attended today. Special thanks to these three guys who um, played so well and to our. Yeah. We can see you again in Seattle. It's been um, how many, six, five, six years already, so we'll see if we can work on uh, an invitation of some kind. So thank you for all the trouble that you, uh, you brought, uh, all, all, the, all the, diff the difficulty of the uh, te technology seemed to pretty much be overcome, and so thanks to the technicians as well. Um, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye.